So you're ready to do this? I wouldn't have said yes if I weren't. What about Luis? What about him? I know you still love him. Even though he's dead, I know he's still alive in your heart and your mind. I won't lie to you and tell you that he's not. But that doesn't mean that I don't love you or want to marry you. It's time for me to move on. I just don't want you to feel pressured. Not a bit. Well, all right then. Come on in. So what's the big emergency? Yeah, if it's about you going to rescue your kid tomorrow, we got other fish to fry. I mean, we already found that auto guy for you. No, 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 this has nothing to do with Marty. Sheridan and I are gonna go get him out of the house where he's held hostage on our own. We need you two guys for something else. We're getting married tonight, and we would like for you two to be our witnesses. You look shocked, Martin. Who is it? Who is it that you want to end up on that porch when you're gray and old? Who is it? Catherine or Pilar? to spend the rest of your life with Pilar or Catherine read my lips Catherine stay away from my husband I have already told you why that's impossible oh yes I know because you're still pining for my husband well that's your problem one that you will have to deal with on your own you can't have him not again you have inflicted enough pain and heartache on me and my family for one lifetime I never meant to, and you know that. Pilar, if you really love Martin the way you say you do, you won't hold him to this sham of a vow renewal ceremony. You'll release him. You'll let him go. How dare you? I mean, where do you get the nerve to speak to me like this? I'm telling you, Catherine, stay away from Martin because you have no idea what I'm capable of. I know what I heard. You were talking to someone, a woman, just before I walked in. Now, who was it, and where'd she go? Honestly, Fox, you must be hearing things. I, I mean, as you can see, I'm very much alone. What was that? I didn't hear anything. Well, I did. Honey, it is late. Come to bed. Honey, I, I'm, I'll be there in a minute. I just got to check my email here. OK. So any bites from any potential employers? <sighs> nope. Not even a nibble. <sighs> Except, oh, there was one uh, company that wanted to take me on as a trainee. That is ridiculous. You are the best lawyer in the Northeast. You did not respond to them, did you? No. Okay. No, I didn't. But if things keep going this way, I may have to. I would rather starve than you take something so beneath you. You're going to find something soon. I am sure of it. Are you? Yes. There's not a doubt in my mind, OK? Even with Teresa trying to have you blackballed everywhere, I have faith in you. I know that you're going to find something challenging in a city that we both love. I hope so. But what we need to do right now is get your mind off of all of this work stuff. Honey, I, I wish I knew how to do that, really. I do. Come here. Yeah, I do. Come here. Mm -hmm. OK, you lost me. Why would you, Ethan's half-sister, give me advice on how to break Ethan and Gwen up? I wouldn't. I would never do that. But you just said that Gwen is the key to ending her own marriage. I was speaking hypothetically, Teresa. I know how much you love Ethan. Everyone does. And you don't hate me for it. Hate you for it? No. God, no, of course not. Look, I was in love with a man who wasn't interested in me in that way, and it took me a really long time to get over it. 
My brother Miguel. Yeah. Thank God I'm past that now. Anyway, I'm the last person who should be giving you relationship advice. I mean, come on, you're the queen of dreams and schemes when it comes to Ethan. No offense. No, it's okay, you know. Everyone knows how much I love him. I... But, you know, Kay, I, uh... I think I'm out of ideas. From the looks of it, I don't think that Gwen is going to let him go. I don't believe it. Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald Crane is giving up. The name of the woman who's sitting in that rocking chair next to you 30 years from now. I knew it. It's my sister. No, it's not. It's Pilar, my wife, the mother of my children. Martin, why do you continue lying to yourself and to me? You know that Catherine owns your heart. I'm done playing your stupid games, Rachel. Now, I've even given you an answer to a question that you had no business asking. So if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do before tomorrow. You consider it work to get ready to renew your wedding vows? I just meant that I'm too busy to be standing here talking with you. This is a very big deal for Pilar. Ah, but no so big for you, is that right? You know what? I'm done, I'm out. I'm done discussing this with you. It's bad enough that you and Catherine live in this house where the ceremony is going to take place. I think it's very fitting that you're in such close proximity to the woman you wish you were committing the rest of your life to tomorrow. Look, Rachel. I'm not going to stand here and deny loving your sister. Catherine and I have shared many happy years together, but we both knew that we were always on borrowed time. We were both married. Yeah, but she to a barely human monster. Granted, and I to a beautiful, innocent woman who didn't deserve any of this. Why is this so hard for you to understand? I tore my family and Pilar apart when I rescued Catherine from Alistair. And you're bound and determined to punish yourself for the rest of your life for one decent thing that you did? Re is that it? Recommitting myself to Pilar is hardly punishment. And yes, Rachel, if I have the opportunity to make up for some of the hurt I've caused Pilar and my family, you're damn right I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm lucky she'll have me back. Now I need to make arrangements with Pilar. Liar. It wasn't Pilar that you saw in that rocking chair next to you. It was my sister. I'd bet my life on it. Despite what you think, I never set out to cause you pain. Never. Martin came to my rescue. He paid a very high price for it. Here's the thing. So did I, and so did his children. We were as surprised as anyone, Pilar, that we fell in love. We tried to fight it. Oh, wait. So I'm supposed to feel grateful for that? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is no one is to blame here. He's not, I'm not. It just happened. And as the years went on, our love grew. We were married in every sense of the word. Yeah? Except you weren't. You were only his mistress in Mexico, that's all. And now it's over and you can't deal with it. Well, too bad, Catherine. I didn't like playing the role of woman scorned either. And if anyone deserves to be alone here, that's you. And if I were you, Catherine, I would start getting used to it. Because tomorrow, Martin's going to marry me again in front of family, friends, and more importantly, God. He was never your husband, and he never will be. We still love each other, Paul. This conversation is over. Stop it. I don't care. You are never going to come between us again. What's going on here? Really, Fox, I didn't hear anything. That sounds like it's coming from over here. Uh, okay, 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 you got me. I was talking to someone. 
Okay. Shoot. What did you just say? Look, there, there's nothing wrong with giving up on a lost cause. I mean, that's exactly how it was with me and Miguel. I'm just trying to get back what's rightfully mine. Well, you know, it's like you said, Teresa, Gwen won't budge. So you just keep banging your head up against the wall. Sooner or later, one of you has to ease up. Well? You heard it here first. It's not gonna be me. Uh, say what? You two are getting hitched? Tonight. Since you two have been so wonderful in helping me find my son, we would like for you to be our witnesses. So what's the big rush? I mean, you never said nothing about this earlier. Well, Chris and I were talking, and we realized that our mission tomorrow could be quite dangerous. You mean going after the kid? I've been wanting to marry Sharon anyway. Now we just have a practical reason to do it sooner rather than later. This way, if one of us don't come out of the house, the other can be legal guardian to both our boys. Not that we expect anything bad to happen, but, you know, just in case. And we couldn't think of a better way to thank you guys for showing us Autocross's hangout. And there's no doubt in our minds that that's where the woman who's kidnapped Marty is keeping him. So what do you say? Will you do it? Will you be witnesses to our wedding? Why not? Yeah, you know, many happy returns and all that jazz. Great. The hotel is all set up. We're meeting the Justice of the Peace out on the beach. Let's roll. Now, enjoy the wedding, people. There won't be much of a honeymoon. So who were you talking to before I came in? If you do, we'll both lose Fox. Okay, if you really want to know, here it is. Um, when I thought I was going to resign from Crane, I put out a few feelers with other companies. That's not a crime. Uh, yeah, and one was really, really interested in me, and when I changed my mind, I called to let them know. And the human resources manager, the woman you heard, um, she just she keeps calling and offering me more money. That's not your fault. I know, I just... You know, I felt really funny. I was worried that you would think I was being a traitor to the family business or something. After everything you've done to help me? No way. So I'm just glad that you decided to stay here at Crane. So am I. I'm very happy here. Listen, do me a favor. Next time something like this happens, just level with me. Don't try and hide it. You know, that makes me feel like something weird's going on behind my back. Of course. And thank you for being so understanding, Fox. Yeah, no problem. Listen, do you have the numbers on the Asian markets? Oh, yeah, they're right here. Here you go. Thanks. things I do for my family. How oh. brilliant was I? You were bright, Valerie. Not modest, but bright. And now to the job at hand, getting my son out of Kay Bennett's clutches. You're sticking around? What if Fox comes back in here? Well, that's just a risk we're going to have to take. We have got to get Miguel back to Harmony because he is the key to breaking up Fox and Kay. Okay, so you're not gonna give up on Ethan, but what are you gonna do? I mean, from what I hear, it seems like you've tried just about everything to get him to come back to you. Yeah, you would not believe the lengths that I've gone to to be with the man that I love. Oh, you'd be surprised. I, I gotta come up with a new strategy, you know? Gwen, Rebecca, they are, they're onto all my old ones. Hmm. You ever read these women's magazines? For advice? Okay, come on, I could write those relationship columns in my sleep. I'm not gonna learn anything from a magazine. Hmm. Oh, here we go. 10 reasons men leave their wives. Hmm, guess what the number one reason is? But I don't care. Okay, they don't know me, Ethan or Gwen. 
Oh, that's interesting. It says that more marriages split up over money than anything else. You gotta tell me something I don't know, Kay. Hmm. The number one obstacle being wives who earn more money than their husbands. The worst stress in a marriage comes when the man's male ego takes a hit. Even modern men like to be the ones to bring home the bacon. Hmm. But, see, that doesn't really apply to Ethan, okay? Uh, Gwen, she's become a major homebody, right? Ethan, he was the breadwinner, so neither one of them is bringing home a paycheck. Right. Wait, let me see that. You want to tell me what's going on here? Nothing, Martin. Everything's really fine. Buenas noches, lovers. Marvin the Marvelous. I've been hired to plan the joyous nuts. First things first, let me see if I can pick out the bride and groom. After years in the biz, I can always tell which is which simply by the way they look at one another. You know what? That's not necessary. Let me introduce you. No need. I can see that you are the beautiful bride just by the way your Prince Charming looks at you. You make a lovely couple. You are my passion for life. Now, I won't fib. You're not the youngest bride and groom I've ever worked with, but you are definitely the most well-suited. You know what, listen, this is my wife, Pilar. She and I are renewing our marriage vows tomorrow. Oh, now I know you're teasing me. <laughs> Marvin the Marvelous is never wrong about these things. You're wrong about this. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Then you must be a friend of the lovely couples. Yes. Hmm. Well, you will make a beautiful bride. Simply stunning. So little time, so much to do. Tell me, my dear, where would you like to start? The food, the flowers, ambiance? Well, actually, well, I, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm, I don't know how. How do you do it? You tell me. We had a very simple ceremony when we were first married. Hmm. Of course. I like to start with your colors and go from there. Okay, fine. That that sounds good. Catherine. If you'll excuse us, my husband and I have a lot to do. I told you I knew how to raise your spirits. <laughs> Among other things, but, <laughs> you know, just as I was about to go down that path of depression, you remind me what's really important. You and Jane. Honey, I love you. Mm -hmm. Love you very much. Let's not talk about this whole work thing anymore. All Let's right. watch the DVD we've been dying to see. All right, DVD, good idea. Okay. I'll get some popcorn. Thank you for believing in me. I love you. Something good's gonna come along soon, I know it. Mm. Thank you. I wish to be as confident as I appear to be. Because with Teresa pulling all the strings, I feel as hopeless as you do. Hey, I thought you said you already knew everything you could find in a women's magazine. No, I, I do, I do, I do. I just, that doesn't mean that I put it all into practice, you know? Oh. Excuse me. You know what? I gotta get this. It's out of the area. Oh, hello? Miguel, uh, you, you got to speak up, Miguel. I cannot hear you. Can you yep, yep, that's better. Uh, no, 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 no. You, you got to make it, please, please, Mama and Papa. They're they're counting on you to be there. They don't they don't have Antonio or Louise anymore. Please, you have got to make every effort you can to get here, Miguel. 
You gotta speak, I can't. Mick. What did he say when you told him how disappointed your mom and your dad would be? Um, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't really hear him very well, but I got the part that he's not gonna make it. That's too bad. Maria would have really liked to see your dad. And what about you? I mean, wouldn't you want to see him too? Yeah, yeah, I'd like to see Miguel. But I don't have any feelings for him. Fox is the love of my life. Well, you know what? You're very lucky because it's obvious that he feels the same way about you. <laughs> well, it could be you and Ethan too. I was just thinking the same thing. Whoa, what's changed? You, because what if, okay, Gwen suddenly landed this high-powered, high-paying job? I mean, that would definitely, you know, put some tension in the relationship, right? What are you telling her, Kay? Thanks to you, I now have a surefire way to get Ethan away from Gwen and back with me. Thank you. All right, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye. yourself what's wrong good question what the hell are you doing helping Teresa to break up Ethan and Gwen's marriage how do I look like John Travolta in that angel movie <laughs> just the look I'm going for Lenny yeah yourself are we ready as you know we're here to witness and celebrate the most joyous of occasions the union of this loving couple Christopher Matthew Booth and Sheridan Crane wait stop we have to stop everything right now what are you talking about I would never do that Kay don't lie to me on top of everything else. I just heard you and Teresa talking right now. Oh, okay. You know, Ethan's my half-brother, too. I have respect for their marriage, and I thought that you did, too. I do. It's just, and I, what are you just... thinking? Teresa is a mad woman when it comes to Ethan. The last thing they need is her giving them more grief. I know, I know. I agree with you. I got to tell you, Kay, I'm really disappointed in you. What, what, what are you talking about? I, I didn't do anything wrong. And why was Teresa thanking you for giving her new ammo on how to win Ethan back? Oh my gosh. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe? Yeah, I was reading her this stupid little article in that magazine. Oh shoot, shoot. I did not mean to cause problems for Ethan and Gwen. I'm such an idiot. You really didn't mean to cause any harm, did you? No, I didn't. You have to believe me. I do. I do. It's just, I hope that Teresa doesn't go around giving you credit for her latest scheme to break up Ethan and Gwen's marriage. I just know that some people aren't going to be as understanding as I am. Like who? Like my mother, for one. When it comes to Ethan, she would kill to have Teresa out of his life. I hate to think of what she would do to someone that she found out was aiding and abetting the enemy. Come on, Miguel's got to be out there somewhere. Oh. All clear, Ivy. I brought us some coffee. Oh, thanks. Well, I've had no luck with the computer. I've had some. You know where Miguel is? Not exactly, but he's been in touch. According to Teresa's secretary, he called just a while ago. Where is he? That nobody seems to know. Apparently, Teresa was trying to convince him to come home for his parents' renewal ceremony tomorrow, but Miguel said no. What? Damn it! That boy is, is Pilar's only surviving son. What is wrong with him? He can't take a few moments out to show it for his mother? I guess not. Well, 
He's still our only hope. We have to bring him back to Harmony. How do you think you're going to persuade him when his family can't? You just leave that to me. First, we've got to find him. You are really hell-bent on getting your son away from Kay. <laughs> yes, you bet I am. Hey, I've got no love loss for her either, but why do you hate her so much? I mean, she's your fiancé's daughter. That has got nothing to do with this. I already watched one son's life be destroyed by a devious woman. You mean Teresa with Ethan? And I will be damned if I let the same thing happen to Fox with Kay Bennett. Yes, this is Teresa Crane calling. I'm so glad you're in. Oh, yes, Alistair's wife. Uh, how's he doing? You know, I, I didn't call to chit-chat. I need you to find me a job for someone I know. I'll be glad to look at my files in the morning. No, right now. I need an offer that she cannot refuse right away. Can you believe how the male penguins look after the eggs for all those months while the female penguins go off and look for food? Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, any good parents would do. Oh, um, can hey, I... check it, check it. You're not going to be able to relax until you do. It's Thank fine. you. It's an email uh, for you. For me? Mm -hmm. Probably just some spam junk. Let me check it quickly. You're not going to believe this. What? Um, this is from a headhunter who says that I should meet with an executive from Collier and Company. They say they have a position open for someone with my skills. I, I, I didn't know you put out any feelers, I, Gwen. I haven't. Well, maybe, maybe they uh, were going through some old resumes and they just came across yours. I guess. It's the only explanation. What's the matter? I don't have anything borrowed. Say what? I have something old and something blue, an antique sapphire ring, but I don't have anything borrowed. That's bad luck. Wait a minute. Thanks. She'd like it back. Belong to her grandmother. Thank you. May we continue? Yes, please. All right, then. Do you, Sheridan, take Christopher to be your lawful wedded husband? Yes, I do. And do you, Christopher, take Sheridan to be your lawfully wedded wife? Yes, I do. By the powers vested in me by this state, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. To the happy couple. Ditto. I've never seen such a happy couple before. Or one with such unusual friends. <laughs> I'm very happy. Me too. But it is very late, and we are on a pretty tight schedule. We've got a big day tomorrow, so come on. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I thought it was supposed to be rice. Don't do that no more, idiot. It's bad for the birdies. 
They do look happy. Too bad about tomorrow. Otto ain't any great believer in the joys of holy matrimony. Otto ain't any great believer in the two of them staying alive. I don't care what Pilar says. I know that he loves you more than he loves her. But he never actually admitted that. He didn't have to. I saw it in his eyes. <gasps> That's what the wedding planner said, but he's committed to renewing these vows with Pilar. What can I do? Stop it from happening. Are you going to lose Martin forever? This has got to work. If Gwen accepts a job offer, she will be walking right into my web. Honey, um, are we going to finish watching the rest of this movie or what? Honey, I'm sorry. I just can't stop thinking about this job offer. You know, when I was out there working, I only ever dreamed of landing a job with Collier and Company. They're in a class by themselves, you know, and the headhunter made it seem like they asked for me by name. Honey, I don't know why you're surprised. I mean, you do have a great track record. You have a great reputation. Yeah, but it's been a really long time since I've been out there, and I never even really considered going back to work now that we have Jane. Wait a minute, so you are, you are considering this? I don't know. You know, it's, it's very flattering, and you know we need the money. I know, but... Isn't uh, Collier and Company based locally? I mean, you wanted me to take a job far away from Harmony, right? I did, and and I still do, you know, but like you said, nothing's really popping up right now, so... Honey, this could be a godsend. I'm just surprised you, uh, you're gonna go for it. How could I not, you know? Something this big to just pop up out of nowhere when we need a paycheck the most? You are really gonna take this interview? You bet I am. This could be the answer to our prayers. You did all this? Who else but your brand new husband? Oh, my husband. I still can't believe it. Well, that makes two of us. I can't wait to tell James that the person he loves most in the whole wide world is going to be his brand new mother. <laughs> Wait till we bring him home as new brother Marty. Thank you so much for being so supportive. I, I couldn't have done this without you. Being with you, I feel like I can do anything. And I feel like all my dreams are coming true. By this time tomorrow, I'll have everything my heart's been aching for. A loving husband, my little boy back in my arms where he belongs. Thank God he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Can you actually believe he calls himself Marvin the Marvelous? I think that I'd believe anything coming from him. Wow, oh, Martin, I'm actually starting to believe this is really going to happen. It is. Hey. Are you still upset that we're having the ceremony here? I, well, you know, I can think of a few places that I prefer, but if it's okay with you, it's fine with me. Right. Doesn't matter where it takes place as long as it happens, right? Tomorrow marks our official new beginning. We're going to start over brand new. With nothing in our way. You may be a quitter, Valerie, but I'm not. I will bring Miguel back here if I have to crawl to wherever he is and drag him back myself. He will be the instrument of Kay and Fox's breakup. You'll see. Oh my gosh, what have I done? Oh, come on, don't be so hard on yourself. But if you could misunderstand and think that I was helping Teresa break up Gwen and Ethan's marriage, your mom could blame me for it, too. The chances are she'll never even know that you and Teresa talked. Why is it that everything I try and do always backfires? That is not true. Look at us. We're doing great. You haven't done anything to mess that up.
Honey, it's all set. I have a meeting with Collier and company tomorrow. The headhunter said they are really excited to meet with me. This is so great. <laughs> it's, uh, it's terrific. OK, now, you don't have a problem with me going back to work, do you? A problem? No, no. What? I mean, why should I? Just because, you know, you're still out there looking. <laughs> Honey, look, I'm fine with it. Really, I'm totally fine with it. I'm just warning you, don't don't jump the gun. I mean, it's it's just an interview. You know? I know exactly what I'm going to wear to completely knock their socks off. This is going to be so great. I'm going to bring in some money, you know, so it's going to take the pressure off you. And it won't even matter if you get hired anywhere or not. <sighs> uh, Teresa Crane? I just want to give you an update. Uh, Gwen Winthrop is meeting with Collier himself of Collier & Company tomorrow. Perfect. She's even more eager than I thought. Let me know how it goes. Soon, Ethan, very soon, you will be with me. I love you, Mrs. Booth. That's a good thing, because I love you too, Mr. Booth. hire Gwen Winthrop, and you will. Do you not want me to go back to work? I belong here with you and our daughter, Kate. Be with me. Last December.